Morning. Merry Christmas. Well, if things aren't always stressful enough to chair and then the mics don't work and then it's like, okay, well, such is life, right? Things don't go perfect. That's why we have a risen savior. We can have grace. And with that, we can still show mercy. We can still be joyful and we can have hope. So those are all great things. I'll greet you with a pastor's verse of encouragement this morning. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all, all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, Luke 2, 10 and 11. And I think that is something that we can be encouraged by. You know, with everything going around, we can be so easily discouraged, but the Christmas season brings encouragement, it brings joy, and it brings peace. And that is my wish and prayer for each one of you. I came across something uh, this morning that I felt that was very fitting, and I wanted to read that here to you this morning. It's a Christmas prayer for peace. In a world where worry, not peace, prevails, stir up the, that good news again. This Christmas, make it real in our hearts. Never have we needed your joy and peace more than now. Thank you for your gift of Jesus, our Emmanuel, the word made flesh. Forgive us for forgetting that your love never changes, never fades, and that you never abandon the purpose of which you came to save us from our sinful condition and to give us life eternal, the joy of relationship with a holy God. Your birth and your death sealed your promise to us forever. And that's by Rebecca Barlow Jordan. I thought that was very fitting. So with that, uh, let's go bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercy Lord, we thank you for your love, and Lord, we thank you for sending your son Jesus to be born into this world, and Lord, we are so thankful, and I pray, Lord, that uh, during this Christmas season that we can truly remember the season and the reason uh, for, uh, for Christmas, and Lord, we thank you that we can have joy and peace and encouragement this time of year, and Lord, I pray that we can be here for each other. Uh, we know things aren't always as maybe we would like, and sometimes things get thrown at us that that maybe add disappointment or uh, discouragement or whatever it may be, Lord, but I pray that we can stay focused to you, Lord, and that we can keep our eye on you and never to uh, forget uh, that you are here, and that you will never ab uh, abandon us. Lord, I pray that you be with Corny and Adriana and Haley as they go in for an MRI tomorrow. Lord, I pray that you put your comforting hands on the travels there and also during the time as the MRI is happening. And Lord, I pray that your will be done uh, in that MRI. And Lord, I pray that you be with, with us this morning, be with the rest of the congregation. I pray that we be truly blessed this Christmas season, and I pray that you be with us here this morning. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Just sing on. Good morning. We are the Fair family. <laughs> Almost. We are about 25% of the Fair family. Maybe a little bit more. But one of the things that just came to me this morning is, is things are not always the way we plan them. And things don't always go the way we want them to go. Things aren't always ideal. Stuff happens and our plans change. You saw that with the mission report. We want to have a mission report. It doesn't work. Can't hear it, now we can't see it. The mic doesn't work. We gotta use a different mic. What's going on? And I'm reminded of <sighs> the Christmas story and Mary and Joseph and how they went through the most difficult time of their life where they had not planned on having a baby and yet there he was they had not planned on going traveling to a different town to take a census and yet they had to go they had not planned on sleeping in a stable and yet they had to 
So now to try to get through these songs. <clears throat> Things don't always go according to our plans. God has a purpose for it. And we need to trust him. And so that's what we want to do. And so we will wipe away our tears. And we will be joyful. Because Jesus has come. And we want to sing <laughs> praises through our tears. <laughs> because we're so happy. <laughs> yeah, now look, you even got that row going. Oh, okay. One was yawning. So maybe that's one thing we can remember is... Life is a struggle. It's always going to be tough. But God has everything in control. And so we want to trust him and sing some songs about Christmas and what he's done for us. If we can get through it. <laughs> A little closer. I'm trying to get away from the mic because I can't. On a lighter note, I started making boats in my upstairs, and the sails were through the roof. Okay. No, he didn't. <laughs> Anyways. Yikes. They came from near, they came from far, following a distant star to where he lay. Not being sure of what it meant, but knowing it was heaven sent, they made their way. And the creatures gathered round and didn't make a sound, and the angels cried. The angels knew what was to come, the reason God had sent his son from up above it filled their hearts with joy to see and knowing of his destiny came tears of love and the angels gathered round and didn't make a sound and the angels cried I've often thought about that night Wondered if they realized that star so bright was sent to tell all the land the Son of God would soon become the Son of Man. And the creatures gathered round and didn't make a sound, and the angels cried, and the angels. All right, we'll ask the 75% to come up here. And make this family complete. So we were here yesterday and we, we went over these songs and we had all the notes written down, what key we were going to be playing in and what to set the, the keyboard at. And today we come here to check everything and it's not working. So we had to change keys and figure it out all over again. So again, it didn't go according to plan. Things aren't easy. So if something sounds a little off between the guitar and the piano, then 
listen to the words instead. <laughs> Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The Lamb, the Lord Jesus, lay down his sweet head. The stars in the sky look down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the Christmas, the bells are ringing, and I feel like shouting, joy to the world. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay close by me forever, and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender Christmas, the angels are singing, and I know the reason a Savior is born. It's Christmas, the bells are ringing, and I feel like shouting, joy to the Christmas, the angels are singing, and I know the reason a Savior is born. It's Christmas, the bells are ringing, and I feel like shouting, joy to the world, joy to the world, joy to the world.
All right. Uh, we have two more songs to sing. One of them is going to be in Acapulco. <laughs> Wrong word. I wish, right? For the cold weather. Um, I don't have a copy of that song. <laughs> We're going to sing it in acapella. Is that better? Unless you all want to come to Acapulco and we'll sing it there. <laughs> that would be fun. So this is perfect timing for an acapella song because my fingers, I don't play guitar that often, so my fingers are getting a little tired. Um, but this song too has a good message and about Jesus and who he was and Mary and what she was going through and, um, and how she must have felt. So we're going to sing Mary Did You Know. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? His child that you soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels tried? When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Mary, did you know? The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. The lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know? That your baby boy is Lord of all creation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? That sleeping child you're holding is the grave. One more song because you wanted an encore. <laughs> oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shining afar through shadows dim, giving the light for those who long have gone. O oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. O oh, beautiful star, the hope of light, guiding the pilgrims through the night, over the mountains till the break of dawn. Into the land of perfect day, it will give out a star of Bethlehem shine on oh beautiful 
Christ the Lamb to light the way unto the land of perfect day. O beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. O beautiful star, the hope, the grace for the redeemed, the good and the blessed. Yonder in glory when the crowd is one. Jesus is now the star divine, brighter and brighter he will shine. O beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. O beautiful star. Christmas. Good morning, and a Merry Christmas to each and every one of you as well, from uh, my wife and I and our household to your households. Um, it is Christmas Day today, and we have reached the final uh, reading of Advent this morning as well, uh, the fifth, the, fifth uh, the Christ candle. The uh, reading is from uh, Psalm 95. <coughs> Excuse me. It says, Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. Today we light all the candles, including the most important candle, uh, that white candle in the center that represents Jesus. This candle is in the center of the wreath to represent that he is at the center of Christmas. Jesus is the one that fulfilled all of the other candles. Because he came to earth as a baby, we celebrate Christmas. Jesus was willing to leave his perfect home in heaven to give us hope, peace, joy, and love. Psalm 150 reads this way. It says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So as we celebrate Jesus' birth today, let us thank him for the hope, love, joy, and peace that we have through him. Let's pray. Lord God, we've gathered here this morning to celebrate the fact that you sent your son Jesus to this earth to be born as a baby, and that is a gift to us. And so we celebrate that also by giving gifts to each other and showing your love to people around us as well. Uh, Lord, thank you so much for doing that because we know his, the reason why he came was so that he could give his life as a sacrifice for us and for, for our sins so that we can have eternal life. Lord, thank you. That is why we can celebrate, truly celebrate Christmas today. Lord God, I ask your blessing upon everyone here and may, may we all go from here challenged and refreshed and encouraged to uh, show hope and peace and love and joy to everyone around us. We pray this in your precious name. Amen.
Well, it is Christmas Day. Thank you for those beautiful songs. Thank you for the congregational singing as well. <clears throat> Almost all of my favorite songs, actually. I should probably say all of my favorite songs. They're all my favorite. Uh, they're all really good. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I was reminded of what Corny talked about. You know, it doesn't always work out, and it doesn't always maybe sound the way we had wanted it to sound. And, and it says in verse 5 of Psalm 150, Praise him with clashing cymbals. Make a mighty noise, it says in another place. That's, that's, that's praising God. Thank you. We've gathered to today to uh, celebrate in song, uh, to worship in prayer, and to focus on Christ at Christmas. Now, there's perhaps many different texts or passages that a person could read on Christmas Day, but I, I believe the one passage... That, that we all know and love, uh, is all our favorites, um, and is one of our favorites as well. This is the probably the most familiar passage of the Christmas story, um, as many of you probably do as well. We read this every year at our house before we sit down to open our gifts, and that is from Luke chapter 2. So I want to read verses 1 to 14. <clears throat> It says, Now in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee to the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. While they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. In the same region there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you great news of good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased." Thus far, our opening text for this morning. This, uh, this December season, or this Advent season, we have been observing the meaning of the candles of the Advent wreath. And so each Sunday in Advent, we've lit a different, an additional candle uh, on the wreath in anticipation of Christmas. Uh, this is just a very small part of our Christmas or Advent celebration. Uh, but this Advent season, we also... Uh, I, I I focused our Advent messages on Sunday mornings also on those themes as well. Um, the first Advent candle represents hope, and so the first Sunday of Advent we looked at hope in the light of Christmas and the Christmas story. The second candle looked at peace and how it relates to Christmas, and then we did the same for the third and the fourth Advent candles which represent joy and love. But as you may have noticed, as we went through them, there was one that never got lit until today. It's a little bigger, maybe a little taller, and it's right in the center of the wreath. And it is called the Christ candle. The Christ candle is saved for last and is lit on Christmas Day. Or if we were to have gathered on Christmas Eve, sometimes maybe it would have been done on Christmas Eve. Uh, so today being Christmas Day, we have lit all four outside candles as well as the center candle uh, in celebration of Christmas. So the Christ candle is in the center because the Christ candle reminds us that Jesus is the center of Christmas. The four outer candles are all important, but they only make sense with Jesus at the center. Yes, Christmas is a time of hope, peace, joy, and love. But, but once this again, is only this is only because of Jesus. And so this morning, I want us to look at Jesus as the center of Christmas and how we only have real hope, peace, joy, and love in our lives because of him. So, number one, there is no real hope without Christ. 
talk about hope first. Jesus is the center of Christmas because there is no real hope without Christ. When we looked at the Advent candle of hope, we saw that hope in Christ gets us through that waiting time. We saw that hope in Christ helps us to go the distance, helps us to remain strong and firm. And we saw that hope in Christ does not disappoint. Uh, Romans 5 verse 5 reads, And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Hope does not disappoint. All real hope in the world is centered on Christ. We also learned that the whole Advent season is all about hope and anticipation. It's about the people in the Old Testament. Were, they were waiting all those long years for Christ to come. And it's also about us who are waiting and longing for Christ to return. God promised us to send Jesus that first time, and he did. God has also promised us that he will send Jesus a second time, and he will. Christmas is all about hope because it is all about Christ. Because God sent his son into the world, you and I have hope. We have hope for today because Christ is with us. We have hope for tomorrow because Christ will never leave us. And we have hope for eternity because Christ is coming back to take us to be with him forever. Too many people live without hope today because they live without Christ. And so that is the first reason that Jesus is the center of Christmas, because all real hope is found in him. There is no real hope without Christ. And then secondly, we see there is no real peace without Christ. Jesus is in the center of Christmas because there is no real peace without Christ. Once again, when we, when we looked at the Advent candle of peace, we saw that Jesus brings peace with God. That Jesus came to save us from our sins so that we could be restored to right relationship with God. We saw that Jesus also brings us peace with ourselves. And that when we trust Jesus, we enjoy a wonderful peace in our hearts. A personal peace that is unlike anything that we can find in the world. We saw that Jesus brings us peace with others as well. That when we put our Christ... Put Christ first, and we pray for our relationships, God reconciles those relationships and allows us to live in peace with those around us. And then finally, we saw that Jesus will also bring peace on earth. When Christ returns, he will rule over this world in peace. All wars, all conflicts will cease, and even the world of nature and animals will be at peace with each other. All true peace is centered on Jesus Christ. Our world is sadly lacking peace today because our world is lacking Christ. The religious leaders of this world won't bring you peace. The political leaders of this world won't bring you peace. The pop psychologists of this world won't bring you peace. All of the drugs or medication in the world won't bring you real peace. It is only Jesus that brings true and lasting peace. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the Savior who came to bring peace between us and God. He is the coming King who comes to reign in peace over all the earth. Those angels that announced the birth of Christ to the shepherds out in the field, they sang songs about peace on earth and goodwill towards men. And so that's a second reason why Jesus is the center of Christmas, because Jesus brings peace. There is no real peace without Christ. And then thirdly, there is no real joy without Christ. When we looked at the Advent candle of joy, we saw that Jesus brings the joy of salvation, and we found out that there is no real joy without salvation, and there is no real salvation without joy. We also saw that joy leads to proclamation, Good news is for sharing, and that joy leads to praise. We saw that all true joy in the world is centered on Christ. When the angels announced the birth of Christ to the shepherds, they not only sang songs of peace in the sky, they proclaimed good news of great joy 
for all the people. And after the shepherds had gone to Bethlehem and they found Jesus in the manger, they were so full of joy, they ran out into the night to tell everyone that Christ was born. They couldn't wait till morning. And they were so filled with joy in sharing that good news of Christmas that they returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Now I, I can say that this world has a lot to offer as far as entertainment. There's a lot of things that are exciting to do, a lot of things that give us a thrill to be able to do, but very little joy. Joy is something that is much deeper than simple happiness. Happiness is temporary and depends very much on our circumstances. But Jesus offers us a joy that transcends all of our circumstances. Christmas is not always a happy time for people. Especially if we have lost someone close to us. It colors the season for us. Many of you in this room may have lost someone recently or within the last couple of years, as we have as well, even though it's almost two years. But Jesus continues to offer us a joy that will sustain us, even in our deepest sorrows. Because true joy doesn't mean that we will never be sad. It means that even in our saddest hours, God is with us. We can trust him, and therefore we can have joy. So that is the third reason that Jesus is the center of Christmas, because Jesus brings a joy that is deeper than happiness and even deeper than our sorrows. And so there is no real joy without Christ. And then the fourth reason that Jesus is the center of Christmas is that there is no real love without Christ. When we consider the Advent candle of love, we had the Sunday school program that Sunday when, when the theme was love, and so I didn't preach a message on it. But I think we, we will all remember the story of, uh, of how it came to be that Mary was to have a child. Uh, when we consider the Advent candle of love, we see Joseph's love for Mary as he looked out for her best interests when he thought she had been unfaithful to him. We see Mary's love for Jesus, the baby, as she wrapped the baby in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. We see God's love for sinners in sending his own son into the world as a sacrifice for our sins. And then we see our love for others which is a natural response to God's love for us. Now, when we say that there is no real love without Christ, I'm absolutely not saying that you can't love your family or be loving towards others unless you are a Christian. There are many people who do not follow Christ who are still very loving people. But what we are saying is this, whether we realize it or not, our love for others is only possible because of Jesus because Jesus is the Son of God. And you cannot experience or express fullness of love without Christ. The Bible tells us that God is love and that all love comes from God. 1 John 4, verse 7 to 8, it tells us, before God ever created the world, there was God and there was love. God loved his son Jesus and Jesus loved God the Father God and Jesus both loved the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit loved the Father and the Son. God is love because from all of eternity there has always been a perfect relationship between the three persons of the Trinity. One God, three persons, in perfect relationship of harmony and love. When God created the world, that love that God had for himself in the persons of the Trinity spilled over onto us. 
It's like tracing a stream back to its source. If you've ever gone to a, for a hike in the woods and you come across a little stream and you're wondering, where did, where did this stream come from? Where does this water come from? And you, maybe you spend a couple of hours following that stream until you come to a lake or a spring that is feeding that stream. When we see any act of or, or expression of love in this world and you trace it back to the source, you will always find God. God is the source of all love in this world. Every act of love in this world finds its source in him. God is love, and all love comes from him. So the story of Christmas is all about love, because Christmas is all about Jesus. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 9 and 10, This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. That baby that was born in Bethlehem grew up to be a man. This man lived a perfect life with no sin. He went to the cross and he died a horrible death. And the Bible tells us why he did this. He did it for you and for me. God sent his son as a, an atoning sacrifice for all of our sins. That's why he came. That's why he lived. That's why he died. And that's why he rose again. So that he can be our savior forever and rescue us from sin and from Satan and from death. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his son. And so that's the fourth reason Jesus is the center of Christmas, because God is love, and all love comes from him. There is no real love without Christ. So I want to conclude with an illustration that may help to pull this all together. Most of us, or, or all of us perhaps, uh, love to sit around a campfire or a fireplace. Some of you maybe have fireplaces in your homes uh, but there's, there's something about a fire in a fireplace or, or a campfire that is so soothing, so pleasant, especially around Christmas time. Sometimes we will even turn on the, the TV on the fireplace channel. There's, a, there's actually a TV channel dedicated 24 hours a day just showing a fire in a fireplace. And we can leave it on all the time to get the feel of a fireplace in our home. But what is it? that we as people love about a fire in a fireplace. What is it exactly? Well, it's the whole experience, isn't it? That light that the fire sheds, the warmth that the fire brings, the scent of the burning wood, and the crackling of the embers. These things all combine to make it such a beautiful experience. But these things don't happen without the fire. The things we love about the fire come from the fire. And the fire is at the center of the light, the warmth, the scent, and the crackling. And it's the same with Christ at Christmas time. We all want hope, peace, joy, and love. But some people seem to want them without Christ, without Jesus. That's like wanting the light and the warmth and the scent and the crackling of the fire in the fireplace without having a fire. It doesn't work that way. Just as the fire is central to all the good things about the fire, so Christ is central to Christmas. Hope, peace, joy, and love come from him. He is the center, and we can only enjoy the good things of Christmas because of him. And so as we Watch the Christ candle burning this morning in the center of all the other candles. Remember that Christ is central. He is the reason for Christmas. He is the one who brings true hope, peace, joy, and love for us all. And so let us draw near to him to worship, to praise, to follow, and to believe. Would you join me in this chorus? Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. 
Christ the Lord. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for sending your son to this earth to be born as a baby. Help us to feel a true sense of your hope, your peace, your joy, and your love that you have given to us and that you have shown to us by sending him to this earth. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this reason to celebrate that we have. And uh, Lord, I want, ask, want to ask your blessing upon each one that is here. As we go from here, may we be able to spread the hope and the peace and the joy and the love that we feel. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. So, over the last number of years, it's become a bit of a tradition, and I hope to keep that tradition going, <laughs> um, of singing the Friedens first. And so, uh, I should have prepared a little bit more for this. I kind of forgot about it this morning. I was going to make sure we had lots of copies, but they are all over in the piano bench. So, if we can maybe gather them up and, and pass them out uh, to as many people as we can. I don't know if we'll have enough copies for everybody, but maybe each family can get one. And uh, normally we would invite everybody up on stage to do this. It works better if we can be close together. But obviously we can't do that today. And so we're just going to sing it where we are. And uh, feel free to join in. If you know, that, know it from memory, uh, uh, just jump right in. And it doesn't have to sound perfect. It never does when we do it. But it sounds wonderful anyway.
Thank you very much for participating. That always sends chills up and down my spine. <laughs> it's a beautiful, beautiful song. I want to leave you with the benediction that we find in Jude. But before I do, again, just a Merry Christmas to each and every one from our household to yours. And may you truly feel the peace of, of Christmas. Uh, it, the benediction goes this way. It says, We're now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. And go in peace. And again, I would just ask that we be dismissed in sections. We'll let that section go first. And please just remain seated until the foyer clears and then the next section can go. Um, visit with each other. Uh, feel free to hang out and visit if you want.